Like when I look back at my first ever <coughs> detox, it was it was rough, you yeah. know. Mm. Uh, and I realised it's kind of like muscle memory. Mm. Your body starts to understand that state of kind of simplicity of, mm. of fasting. Of, of I mean, fasting is not just even not just a physical process. It's a spiritual, it's a mental process. Sweet man, looking forward to it. What's your plans today? Oh. Good morning, guys. Welcome to the video. It is currently 10 to 10, cowboy time. So I've just finished up with a health coach call. So that was basically easing out of what I did in phase one of the detox, which I talked about over the last couple of videos, and then easing into a phase two, which I'm currently on now, which I'll talk about later. It's, it's not relevant right now, but I'm going to show you the lessons and show you what I go through later down the line. So that'd be really cool. From a trading perspective, I'm going to be doing some ASR, so I need to unravel some of the trades that I took last week. Um, start preparing for next week, and there's a few things that I want to showcase in terms of like what I get up to on a weekend, which I think would be really neat to show as well. So, without further ado, let's go get it. I'm just going to quickly walk you through a trade that I took coming into the week, which I'm currently in the process of reviewing. So whilst I'm doing that, I thought I'd share the process with you. So daily chart, what are we looking at? Well, let's just back out a little bit more actually. Let's go to the weekly. Now weekly chart from this standpoint, we are looking at the fact that price has swept previous lows to the left. So this low in here prior to initiate into the upside, same with this bigger low from January 2021. So we've seen this corrective move higher that ended up turning into that pop higher. We didn't create the, the biggest sign of an intention to the upside, right? We've had this before on dollar swear swear. It takes out the high, liquidates all the stops to the left, and then just initiates price to the, to the downside. The same thing could have been happening here, but overall, I'm also seeing this as a pullback in the daily leg of this low, formed a new higher high. It's a bit more intentional than the one that happened to the left. Pull back in price, looking for longs. But short term, because we are in this pullback phase, looking for bearish intent, looking for that to continue to the, to the downside. Now, for our chart, what we had is order flow very much bearish. Same on the one hour. It's very evident that price is going to pull back. I was looking for price to pull back into this region here, or even potentially a little bit higher, which I did understand as well, which was here. Right, so either of these two areas is absolutely fine. Now, I was very well aware that we could see a short term buy, which is what I chose to capitalize on. So we had this lower low form, liquidated. We had this pop to the upside and we returned back into this area. If you look at this, how wide this area is, it's, it's a lot, there's gonna be a lot of volume contained within this area. So I'm expecting at least a reaction out of here, if not a pop higher. So playing that narrative, then I moved down to the 15 and lower time frames. Every, everything from an interday standpoint aligned nicely. Initially, we did sweep Asia, then we moved lower coming into London, and then New York, we had that reversal. So I was looking to play prices higher temporarily to capitalize on that short-term trade. Lined beautifully, beautifully with this area in here. Took advantage of these uh, long, and then we came out at a nice small win to start the week. So a lot of momentum. And that was just one of the trades that I took, but beautiful trade, but quick tip for you all. Even if you are taking trades counter trend, always back out, always zoom out to the bigger picture and always remember where price came from. Because if you're not even factoring in the daily chart, the weekly chart, the monthly chart, you're gonna be sucked into such a small time frame of you know, these kind of conditions, which you can still play, but having that higher time frame narrative of what actually happened gives you such an edge because if you're playing price with the original flow of the market, it makes things so much more easier. In the same way that a fish would swim downstream in most cases, but if you're trying to swim up upstream, you're fighting against the current of the market and it can be a lot more difficult to do. So it's not, it's not saying it's not possible. There's certain situations where I will do it, but you wanna be cautious about deploying capital because they tend to be a little bit more higher risk positions.
Business, business. Business, business. Here we have a little look into my ASR. So this is what I've put in terms of just a little reflection on the week. So this is something that I do on a weekly basis. It helps to keep me sharp, helps to keep me consistently improving as well. Even for myself, consistently improving is a big part of what I do. Eventually you get to a stage within your trading where it's not necessarily about backtesting the strategy anymore. It's more about the maintenance of peak performance and how to consistently get better with, with that. Because you've got to remember, you can't, whatever got you consistent in the first place, you can never stop doing it. If you, if you start to stop doing those things that got you consistent in the first place, you will, you'll slack off, you'll drop. So you need to consistently do that. So here I've got a summary of the week along with the lessons. So here you can see strong start to the week. I was in ultimate flow state and performed well. Then on Tuesday, I was in a situation where my narrative was absolutely perfect and I was looking for lower prices. But then on two occasions, I was missed, swerved by price by 3.3 to 5 pips, and I would have banked, you know, 8%. But it is what it is. It's part of the game. That did throw me off slightly, but then I did get back into a state of flow pretty quickly afterwards. So something to learn from, but overall, it shouldn't really affect you that. And the quicker you can get back to equilibrium, the better. And then lessons I've got. This is a key lesson that I learned this week. And it's something I've had to reiterate a couple of times. Be defensive when playing with balance. So let's say you are minus 2% for the month. That's when you want to be a bit more conservative. You want to say, right, let me just wait for high quality trades and let me stick to that. And offensive when playing with profits. So on the other side of things, if you're 8% in profit for the month, then you have you can afford to be a bit more lenient with your rules essentially. Still trade the plan, but you can maybe add some counter trend trades in there. You know, you're not essentially trading in line with the higher time frames, but there might be a short term play you can actually trade that allows you to then pump that profit up to 11, 12, 13%. But if you take a loss, it's only 1%. So you sat at 7% for the month. So this is when you reach that next level as, as a trader. And that's really, really important. Then I've got some other lessons in there. And then overall, something that I've noticed sometimes that I can do is coming into Friday, New York, if I don't see anything coming into the day, sometimes my focus can tend to drift off just a little bit. So it's important I actually bring myself back into a state of flow until the very, very end of the week, because the amount of times where Friday, back end of New York, something forms, and I'm just, I'm kind of going out of that flow. So I miss it or I still take it, but you know, so I just need to be a bit more consistent with that. So. Overall, this is just a, a little reflection for myself. I'd recommend everyone to do this as well. And it doesn't take long to do, but you, it's just something you really want to be doing and stay on, in, on top of yourself and your trading because the goal is to treat it like a business. Right, apart from my mic falling off, can't get the staff these days. I'm at the gym now, it's 3.30. I'm waiting on Josh to get his ass here so we can train. Uh, it shouldn't be too long now. And yeah, this morning's work, so cracked on with a lot of ASR. Obviously, for those of you who don't know, ASR stands for Advanced Self Review. It's basically going through the trades that you've taken, trades that you've missed, reviewing lessons, reviewing trades. That's what I tend to do on a Saturday. But as and when I take trades during the week, that's when I'll journal it properly. And then Saturday is like a review process of the trades that I've taken. Take the lessons into the next week, repeat the same process. Um, so done my ASR, done the market breakdown, Quick tip for you in terms of like ASR as well. If you can't journal, I recommend you journal it as quick as possible if you can when you do take a trade. But let's say for example, you work a full-time job, you may not be able to do that yet. So what I'd recommend is just setting a day per week, for example, Saturday or Friday evening, Sunday, whenever it may be, sit down, do your journaling and create like a, a positive process out of it where you love doing it because if you hate journaling, it's a part of like things that you just don't like, you won't treat it the same as if you love it. If you love it, you'll sit down with a coffee, you'll get to work, you'll put the effort in, you'll really dig into the smaller details to try and improve. Whereas if you hate it, it's just a chore and you just, you don't really care about it, you won't improve. And you just won't dig the same lessons out of it as what someone who is passionate about it will. So something to take into consideration. Um, if you do work a nine to five job or a full-time work, whatever it may be, set a day and do it there 
Done the market breakdown. Market's looking stunning for next week. Done the health coach call. And then does some like admin bits, catching up, planning the week next week. And then we are now at the gym. After the gym, I'm going to hit the spa. Because usually what I like to do at the end of every month, it's the end of the month now. Um, here he is. What time is this? <laughs> anyway, I'm going to go spa and sauna tonight. And then refresh for the week. And then that should be good. But let's go and train now and hit a good session. How many bills does this gym have it? Oh, everything's gone. It's that. Yo, you ever hear that song and you've not heard it in about 10 years and you're like, Pfft, it just brings all the memories back. 90s kids, listen to this. Right, you're back in the office. I was going to go to the spa then. I went shopping, I was hungry, so I came back here to cook up some good old food, but I'm going to go spa tomorrow instead, but overall it's been pretty much a work day, um, but I love being in here, I love working, so it doesn't feel like work, so I'm just going to finish off some final bits, then I'm going to go home and chill, so that is the plan, but I hope you've all enjoyed this video, um, I know it's been a weekend vlog, there's been no actual training, but it gives you a different point of view on what a weekend looks like. Sundays can be different sometimes as well. I tend to like not do as much work, but once again, it depends. So anyway, hope you all enjoyed this video. Make sure to see the next one when that comes out, but have a great week in the markets and let's get it. Speak soon.